Hi guys, uh, in my previous video I showed you all these forearm muscles, anterior forearm and posterior forearm muscles. Today I'm going to focus on the hand muscles. We have intrinsic, small intrinsic hand muscles. First of all, I'm going to show you uh, the bony bits of the hand. So if you look at here, this is the hand. I'm going to take it a little bit closer. So if you look at the hand, we have three parts. Here is the carpal bones, and these are the um, metacarpal bones, and we have phalanges for the digits. For the carpal bones, you can see proximal and the distal row of the carpal bones. We have four bones here in the proximal row. From the lateral to the medial, from the thumb side to the pinky side, you can see the scaphoid, lunate, triquitrum and this one would be the pz4 and then from the um, lateral to medial the distal row you can see four bones as well trapezium trapezoid and this large one is the capitate and this is the hamate and here is the hook of the hamate so scaphoid lunate triquitrum pz4 um, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. We have eight bones. For the metacarpal, you can see the base of the metacarpal shaft and the head, and they are numbered from the uh, thumb side to the pinky side. One, two, three, four, five. And you can also see the phalanges, proximal, middle, distal phalanges for all digits except the thumb. Thumb has proximal and distal, two phalanges. Totally, we have 14 phalanges. For each and every phalanges we have base, shaft, and the head of the phalanges. So now I'm gonna focus on the um, intrinsic hand muscles. Do you know what's the difference between the extrinsic and intrinsic hand muscles? You know we have extrinsic uh, forearm muscles here. They are actually coming from the forearm, but they are going down, they go further down to the hand and do um, some movement like flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. I showed you in my previous videos the extrinsic hand muscles. And now I'm gonna focus on the intrinsic hand muscles. So when I say extrinsic, it means that the uh, proximal attachment of the muscle is outside the hand. It's coming from the forearm. Whereas the distal attachment is inside the hand. And Intrinsic means that both proximal and distal attachments are inside the hand. They are small intrinsic hand muscles. So what is the functions of the intrinsic and intrin intrin extrinsic hand muscles? For the extrinsic hand muscles, it's for the power grip. So you need more force. When you need more force, you need a, a long extrinsic uh, and large extrinsic um, hand muscles, they are coming from the forearm. For example, for the power grip, when you are um, grasping the, or, and holding the mug or cup, it's called the power grip. Or when you are um, handing the suitcase, it's the power grip. Uh, whereas, the precise grip, is related to the intrinsic hand muscles. If you are doing some uh, jobs precisely like holding the pencil, holding the pencil, it's a precise grip. So you can, you need the, um, for the precise grip, you need intrinsic hand muscles. If you are uh, wearing the, uh, or putting on the shirts and uh, closing the buttons, you need precise grip or intrinsic hand muscles for the precise grip. So this is the uh, functional differences between the extrinsic and intrinsic hand muscles. Uh, now I'm gonna classify the intrinsic hand muscles. If you look at here, there is a projection just proximal to the thumb. We have a big projection, it's called the thinner eminence. And if you look at here, we have the pinky or little finger just proximal to this, we have another small projection, it's called hypothenar. Thinner eminence, hypothenar, and in between them we have the palm. So thinner eminence, we have three muscles for the thinner, 
three muscles for the hypothenar and some muscles for the palm. Now I'm gonna show you one by one on this uh, beautiful model. So if you look at here, this is the thumb and this is the hypothenar, uh, sorry, the thinner muscles. On the outside, we have this muscle. It is called the AB or abductor pollicis. So if you look at here, all these uh, three thinner muscles coming from the carpal bone, mainly the lateral carpal bone. I showed you the carpal bone laterally and proximal to the thumb. This is the thumb. We have the scaphoid and trapezium. So all these thinner muscles originating from the scaphoid and thinner, and also it's originating uh, from the attaching to the uh, flexor retinaculum. This white color is the flexor retinaculum. It's a um, connective tissue. It's the thickening of the deep fascia covers the carpal bones and makes the roof of the carpal tunnel. So all these thinner muscles attaching to the flexor retinaculum and also to the uh, lateral carpal bones, scaphoid and trapezium. And then if you look at here, abductor pollicis brevis, it goes down and attaches to the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Actually, it attaches to the outside of the base of the proximal phalanx. On the medial side, we have another muscle, this one. It is called flexor pollicis brevis. Again, it's coming from the flexor retinaculum and the scaphoid and lunate, sorry, scaphoid and trapezium. And it, atta it attaches to the, again, the, just next to the abductor tendon, attaches to the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Deep to these two muscles, we have another muscle. You can see here a little bit, some muscle fibers deep to this. It's called opponent's pollicis. Again, it's coming from the carpal bones and flexor retinaculum and attaches to the lateral border of the shaft of the uh, first, uh, first metacarpal bone. So the name of the muscles help, shows us the uh, function or actions of the muscles. Abductor can do abduction and flexor can do flexion of the thumb. So in the anatomical position, this is my thumb. So if you look at these fingers, we have nails. When you are doing extension, you are moving the fingers to the nails. So it's called extension. When you are moving opposite to the nails, it's flexion. So it's exactly, you can see in the thumb, this function, but you know the thumb is rotating 90 degrees during the intrauterine evolution. So if you look at here, we have the nail. So when you are moving to the nail, it's called extension. Mm. When you are moving opposite to the nail is flexion. What about the abduction and adduction? Abduction, the axial uh, line is the mid finger. When the fingers are moving away from the mid finger, it's called adduction, abduction. When you're moving to the axial line, I mean the mid finger, it is called adduction. What about the thumb? As I mentioned earlier, it's rotated 90 degrees. So if it's moving to the index finger, it is called adduction. It's moving away from the fingers, it's called abduction. So abductor pollicis brevis can do abduction and flexor can do flexion of the thumb. And opponents rotating the um, thumb medially, just put the tip of the thumb to the tip of the, in front of the tip of the other fingers. It's called opposition. Now I'm gonna show you the other muscles here, hypothenar muscles. Hypothenar, they have the same name. We have abductor, flexor, and opponents, but it's for the little finger. Little finger is DGT minimi. 
outside we have abductor. Both outside muscles are abductor, abductor pollicis brevis, abductor digiti minimi. So again, it's coming from the flexor retinacula and also it's coming from the pisiform, this bone. So I can show you on the bone. This bone is called the pisiform. So I can show you on my hand. This bony projection is known as the PZ4. So abductor digiti minimi attaches to the PZ form of flexor retinacula, and it's going down and attaches to the uh, medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the little finger. On the inside, we have flexor digiti minimi, both flexors, flexor pollicis brevis, flexor digiti minimi, they are inside. It's again coming from the flexor retinaculum here, and it also attaches the PZ form and the hamate, other carpal bone. And it goes down and attaches to the medial side of the uh, base of the proximal phalanx. And deep to these two muscles, you can see here we have another muscle. It is known as the opponent's digiti minimi. Opponent's, again, it's, it attaches to the flexor retinaculum and PZ form and also the hamate and it attaches to the medial border of the shaft of the, the fifth metacarpal bone. So what is the actions? So abduction or abductor DGT minimi can do this. This is the axial line. This is parallel with the midfinger. So abductor is here outside. When it contracts, it can move the little finger away from the mid finger. It is called abduction. And the flexion is this. Flexion, moving the finger opposite to the nail, it's flexion. And opponents means that it's moving the little finger to the palm and towards the thumb. It's called opponents or opposition. Now I'm going to show you the palm muscles. If you look at here closely, we have some tendons. So these are the tendons of the uh, flexor muscles, for extensing flexor muscles. We have flexor digitorum superficialis tendon. And deep to this, we have flexor digitorum profundus tendon, which goes further down and attaches to the uh, distal phalanges. And you can see some, uh, some muscles in between the uh, these tendons, they are called the lumbrical muscles. So lumbrical uh, looks like a worm-shaped muscle. Worm does not have a bone, so lumbricals do not attach to the bone. They attach to the flexor digitorum profundus tendons, and then they go back and attach to the extensor expansion of the um, four medial fingers. So. When they contract the lumbricals, uh, they can do L-shaped hands. So lumbrical starts with L, it makes the L-shaped hand. It, I mean that it can flex the knuc knuckles, metacarpophalangeal joints, and extends the uh, interphalangeal joints. Why? Because the lumbricals crossing the metacarpophalangeal anteriorly, so when they contract, they can do flexion and then they go back and attach to the extensor expansion, which is a connective tissue uh, behind, the, um, behind the, the digits. You can see here, this is the connective tissue. When the lumbrical contrast, it's pulling back this connective tissue, so it can do extension of the interphalangeal joints. I have a video about the lumbricals. Please watch that video. Specifically, I explain the functions of the lumbricals. Deep to the lumbricals, we have other muscles. First of all, I'm going to show you this muscle. Again, it's related to the thumb, so it has the word um, pollicis. So it's called adductor pollicis. So abductor pollicis brevis, as I mentioned before, it's on the outside. It attaches to the lateral side of the proximal phalanx. Adductor pollicis attaches to the inside of the base of the proximal phalanx, so it can do adduction. This is the adduction, moving the thumb 
to the fingers, it's called adduction. Moving away is abduction. Actually, adductor policies has two heads. You cannot see here very well, but I can show you the uh, transverse head and oblique head would be a little bit deep. So they are coming from the, uh, the, the metacarpal and carpal bones and attaching to the medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb and can do adduction. Deep to these muscles, we have interossei muscles. If you look at here, we have some dorsal interossei, one, two, three, four, and three palmar interossei. They are in the palm side. You cannot see because it's deep to these structures. Inter means between, os means bones. So it attaches to the, it's filling this space between the metacarpal bone, attached to the metacarpal bone, as you see here. And then they go down and they attach to the base of the proximal phalanx of the four medial digits and also attach, they attach to the extensor expansion. So dorsal can do abduction and palmar interossei can do adduction. There is a mnemonic for this. It helps you to memorize it. DAB pad. DAB D stands for dorsal interosseus. AB, abduction, DAB. So it can do abduction. This is the midfinger. When digits moving away from the midfinger, it's abduction. So this is the action of the dorsal interossea. PAD, P stands for palmar interossea. AD, adduction. They can do adduction, palmar adduction. So again, I have I provided a video, please watch the video about the intracellular muscles as well. So as a quick recap, we have thinner eminence, three thinner eminence, three hypothenar eminence, four lumbricals here, and I showed you adductor pollicis, and finally four dorsal intracellular and three palmar intracellular muscles. Thank you for your attention.